How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I'm going to walk you through how to install some standard MC4 connectors on your solar cabling. Now for me, I'm making some extension cables to go from my garage out to some panels in my driveway. But this is also just great to know whether you're doing a DIY setup yourself, maybe you're doing an RV setup, an off-grid setup, something like this where you run some panels into an EcoFlow Delta Pro setup, or maybe you have a professionally installed system and you just want a little capability to troubleshoot and fix things just in case one of those connectors gets damaged. Either way, it is a super approachable project, so let's jump into it. So I'm just using this pretty inexpensive eye crimp kit I got off Amazon. It comes with everything you need. So it'll come with four different sets of MC4 connectors. It'll come with your shears, your crimpers, and then two spanners, which come in handy. And you'll see that in a second. Super inexpensive. I think it's like $30. And you'll see a link in the description that'll link you over to our Amazon store. And under the solar listing section, you'll find this exact kit and then also the cabling that I'm using today. Now, first up, I'll use these shears and I'll go ahead and strip back this insulation. If you don't feel comfortable using the shears, you can use some wire strippers matched up to the correct gauge. This is 10 gauge cabling that we're using on this one. There's a little closer look with the stranded wire. It's about three quarters of an inch of insulation stripped off there. And then I do give them a light twist just to make sure none of those strands fray off to the side as, as we try to crimp on those contacts. So now the cables are ready. We'll move on and grab a set of our MC4 connectors. Now this can be a little confusing because you hear people say male and female connectors. Now that is not referring to the actual plastic housing here. That would be referring to our metal contacts. So you would have a socket, which is the female side and a pin, which is the male side. So that is where the actual contact is being made inside these plastic housing. Now for my red, that is gonna be my positive side. I want to match that with the female metal contact, which will correspond to this plastic housing. Then for the crimper, make sure you understand your crimper. This one specifically has three different spots. One is for 10 gauge, then 12 gauge, and then 14 gauge. I have 10 gauge wire, so I'll go ahead and use this one all the way down here. So you just retract those draws, place the connector in like this, slightly press down, don't press it down yet, because now you'd want to introduce your wire on the other side, making sure none of those strands fray off. And we'll try to take a close look while I crimp this and you'll see how it folds over those two pieces resulting in a nice solid crimp on the wire. And then once you're fully crimped, the jaws will release. Now once you're done, you do want to do a pull test, making sure your connection is secure. So once you have the socket on, then you'll go ahead and unscrew this cap and you'll do an order of operations. Your cap goes on first. Then you have that rubber grommet that would go on, making sure you get over the insulation. And then we'd go ahead and put the rest of the plastic housing over. Now you wanna make sure that plastic housing goes all the way down. Sometimes you'll hear a click in there making sure it's fully seated. Then you can start to just thread that cap onto the plastic housing. Now you can go hand tight with that but here is where those spanners come in handy. So you have this end that can go over the screw side and then you'll just match the slot onto the other end. And then this is where you're able to actually do your final tightening. What you're doing is compressing that grommet down so it makes a weather tight seal around your cable. And I do have an example of this I cut off earlier. If we take that cap back off, you can see how that grommet will compress around the cabling that would keep water from coming in from this side. And then we have that O-ring over here. So once we have our female and our male ends connected, we have an O-ring seal here, and then we have a weather tight seal from the grommet. So we keep water out of our metal contacts. So now that female end is done, we'll move on to the male end.
All right, that is it. The other thing you'll note is that those spanners also are handy for release tools. So you just place those right here. It will detent both sides and then you're able to remove that connection. All right, so I got my extension cable done and hopefully this helped you out with your guys' project. Let me know if you have any questions or any other comments down below the video. We, we always appreciate hearing from you guys. Now, if you're thinking about going solar for your own home and you need a little help along the way, we've been doing this for a long time, helping homeowners. That's predominantly been in repairs and maintenance with Everyday Home Repairs YouTube channel. But now we're really diving into solar with this channel, Everyday Solar, and putting together an awesome team of solar consultants around the country that can really help you out. We wanna help you save time and money and get the right system for your home. I am a big believer in solar, but there are many things in the industry you need to look out for and are not in your best interest. So if you want a little help from our team, you'll see right below the video in the description, another link for a form you can fill out and then we'll be reaching out to you in the next day so we can start that conversation and get you aligned to the right system and installer for your home. Now, another thing you need to consider is how the heck are you gonna pay for these solar panels? There are many different options and again, you need to educate yourself but a great place to start is this video right here and I'll walk you through the four main different ways to pay for panels which ones I prefer and which ones I think you should just stick away from so thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one take care